Hello and welcome. Thank you so much, so much for joining us today as my special guests. I have Art and Madam Who. Welcome. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> we have something very special to do, and all of you are going to get to witness something that I have never participated in myself, and that is kind of the birth of a song. Um, the, the, the way that this started was I went to the funeral of a friend. Uh, well, actually, it was a friend's father. And it was at a church, and everyone was talking about how he was in a better place. And then they did this music video that was really very touching. But, you know, it's all about how he's going to heaven and he's in a better place. And and that wasn't the song. But, you know, that was kind of the feel you got from the video. And I thought, and that kind of inspired me to write a song. And so I put down the lyrics. And I kind of had a little bit of a melody in mind, but I didn't quite have the whole thing. And so Art fleshed it out for me. And Madam Who and Art sang it. And let's just start with what is here and, and then we'll go from there. So here is the, the song. That's what we have so far um and it's beautiful i do like it it is pretty but it isn't quite what i had in mind <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and i'll tell you um and this is entirely on me because you know i had these ideas and i really didn't tell art much of what i was thinking at all because i've never done this before and i didn't I, you know, I, I'm thinking this, and so I'm thinking that that's coming through, and it's not. Um, but um, I really wanted this to be two different vocals, one male, one female. Right, yeah. And it starts with the male vocal mm. because it's it's the, the original viewpoint is from the deceased. And the right. deceased is saying, I'm not in a better place, but that's okay. I'm okay mm -hmm. with this. And then he shifts slightly and says, I'm not in a better place but you're going to be okay, even though I'm not in a better place. Right. And then I like what you did with it there, Art. I love that you 
put some vocals on top of each other and had it, you know, because I would like to then have both of them. But then the last verse should be just the female voice. And it's like it's the mm. widow taking over. Right, saying, right, right, right. So it is really. Voice, uh, but uh, I'm going to be okay. Right. Yeah. Whereas we, I guess we didn't see it that way, I suppose. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's the way you interpret it. Um, and I, I guess me and Madam Who were thinking, let's make a sweet song out of it and get your lyrics across and then arrange it in a way that, that works out as a song. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. song mm -hmm. arrangement. Like it's almost a, it's a, like a sweet pop song. I guess. Yeah, that's the way you made it. But become, I yeah. wanted it to be more of a a strength thing. Yeah. That that he's saying you, you're gonna be you're gonna be able to go on. And then when she gets that message, that's why I had the end of the song being so loud that she's drawing right. all that strength. Yeah. And saying, Yeah, I've got it. I'm gonna yep, be okay. Yep. Okay. Um yeah, I suppose that's something we we literally, if you're going to do that, the perfect way to do it is to sit in a room with someone and literally go through and work through the song. Mm -hmm. um, to do it, I guess, from a distance and interpret it and pass it on to other people. And like I, I passed your your thing on to Audra mm -hmm. and, um, and she interpreted it a certain way. And I thought, yeah, great. Like that's a, it's a good vibe. It's a good feel. Um, yeah, let's go with that. I, and I guess it's um, you, you're. It's a time issue and trying to put something together in a short period yeah. of time, and also not communicating closely. Like if I'm writing something with someone here, we'll sit down together and we'll work on a song and we'll talk back and forth. No, that's not what I want. No, I'd prefer that. So you're writing together. So essentially the way that we did it was that you throw an idea out and it's like, okay, I like the sound of that. Uh, I did the version with just your vocal, which was completely different, Gigi. And then I took that and sent that to Audra and then she came back with what I thought was just a cool pop kind of idea. Yeah, it is a and then we idea. Completely, like the idea. We completely went with that and just, mm -hmm. yep. That's what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the the best way to write is definitely to be in communication mm -hmm. all the time, talking about because you're the you're the songwriter essentially. Mm -hmm. So you've got a certain vision in your head, but we can't really interpret that. We don't know that, so right. we do it right. the way that right. we think. Okay, let's make a good song. I think that's what I had in mind: is let's just produce something for Gigi. That is, she wouldn't expect to happen, you know, and and make it kind of, yeah, reasonably well produced and a, a bit of a pop song, I guess. I don't know. What do you think, Madam Who? Um, yeah, I, I, I did see in her notes where she was said second person and everything, and I thought, yeah, 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 she would do that, but yeah. it just didn't turn out to be like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> Maybe yeah, the time yeah. restraints, yeah, because I, I just yeah. did. The vocals yesterday. Yeah. Wow. In this little wow. tiny window of time that I had. Yeah. Well, you know, now that we've gotten this show, you know, going, we really don't have the time constraint anymore because, you know, we had set this show a while ago and, and we wanted to have it ready for this. But now that, you know, this show has gone, we, we really don't have any kind of, of, of time frame that we're looking right. at. Right. So it can develop. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the other thing is that we wanted to have it ready for this. So mm -hmm. I spent like yesterday mm -hmm. mixing it and doing family things. And I was out and then I was back in. I was like, no, I've got to finish mm -hmm. this song. My son had a gig. I was just like, oh. and <laughs> actually, two of my boys had gigs yesterday. So one had a gig in the afternoon doing covers. <laughs> so he had his show. So we drove to that. It's about a 20 minute drive. So, what? So I'm mixing and doing stuff here. And it's like, okay, we better go. Went, saw one boy, then came home, thought, okay, I'll try and finish this up, and uh, which is when I did it and then sent it and then went out to see the other kid do his gig. So, yeah, we just tried to, I guess, tried to sort of squash it all in, really, didn't we, in a, mm -hmm. in a sh short space of time. 
Yeah. But, and yeah, other, we can work on it. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I was thinking is, you know, Art, you mentioned putting some um, visuals with it, which I did want yeah. to do. Mm. And I hadn't really started thinking about what I wanted to do for visuals until a couple of days ago. Yeah. But one thing I would like to do is, Madam Who, if you could dress up like a widow and do some lip sync um, or or even sing it, you know, mm -hmm. dressed in, in widow's like you're at a funeral that that would be really great too i oh, make you want to do an actual music video for it yeah yeah i want to eventually yeah. i do want to turn it into a visual a music video but it doesn't need to be the two of you for all of the visuals i can i can make mm. my own visuals for for portions of it mm -hmm. i was thinking i could take some some um funerals that are on youtube that are from either from um mm. fictional uh, you know stuff or just stuff that people have posted and make sure their faces aren't showing and just show those actual funerals for a bit you know and yeah. the, and then mix that in with a little bit of of the two of you singing okay and, and i was also I, thinking i might even do some some clouds that you know it's kind of like you're going into heaven but then that dissolves away because that's that's not real yeah Right, mm -hmm. so you've got a vision for it. I feel mm -hmm. as though um, we need to sort of get together and sit down, like in a group situation like this, mm -hmm. but obviously not during a live stream, <laughs> and just kind of sit down and, and talk through it, throw some ideas around, maybe bring the community in, which and is kind of... It. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely storyboard it and you know that, that that's kind of what i'm all about is getting out there and bringing the community in like that kind of makes it special to me and especially bringing like-minded people in to um yeah work on ideas together mark so, caesar says people keep, mark caesar says people keep telling me i'm not needed for the visuals what does that <laughs> say about me <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know what do you look like <laughs> Sounds like he has a face for radio. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, right. Well, I'm no pretty boy, but, you know, I get myself <laughs> out there. <so. laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Just get out there and do it. Like, definitely bring people in from the, the community, Gigi. Get them in yeah. there. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds yeah, good. But, but, but I do so appreciate the work that you've done. You've done some really good work there, and that is a very pretty song. And we could eventually release two different versions of the song. Yeah, true, true. I was really happy with that. Um, I was actually really happy as a pop song. Mm -hmm. And, like, when Madam Who sent that idea back, I just thought, this is cool. It's just got a, a vibe. Like, straight away, the, the, she set up the, the whole sound of it because essentially what I did was take your song and then I sent you back a thing mm. that, that I sort of built around your vocal that you sent me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I sent the same thing to Madam Who, and then she came back with a drum beat and everything, and it's very much in your style, Madam Who. Like, um, mm, yeah, I don't that, know if it's that, my style, but I did it. <laughs> that true. That that's it. I kind of perceived it in that way. With okay. the, the drums. I, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was yeah, really good. But we can do a couple of versions. Yeah, Absolutely. I was just trying to make Absolutely. it into a song with a verses hmm. and choruses. Yeah, yeah and I do, exactly. I do like exactly. some of the yeah. changes that you made. Yeah. I especially like the change of, of in the center, where it, where it shifts the focus from me to us, and then yeah. To, yeah, yeah. then to me. yeah, which was in your lyrics. So you did go from to me to to us. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I yeah, I guess it's just an interpretation, and it's a it's a pop song. You mm -hmm. got a pop song, Gigi. Yep, I've got a pop song. <laughs> <laughs> and you wrote it. Yep, yep. And Madam Who brought it to and Art. You, the two of you brought it to life. I could not yeah. have done that without you. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good fun. I love doing it. By the way, like it's good. it's not a um. It's no effort. It's no. It's not a chore. It's just good fun. Yeah, I had fun like doing that. it too. Yeah, I love taking people's ideas and interpreting them in a certain way, and then just putting it out there. You know, it's honestly, it's just creative fun. Who mm -hmm. cares? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but let's sit and talk about it and come up with a version that that suits you although i will say that the version that i did where it was just literally you mm -hmm. Gigi, singing mm -hmm. and just with the keyboard i thought was really sweet and heartfelt you know mm. like to me that's really at the core of it okay um you should put that out there as well. You got two versions of the song <laughs> like, already, so yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. let's do another version. Okay. Yeah. Let's shift the topic a bit and talk a bit about the Utopians. Yes. So what's what what's going on with the Utopians? How are they doing? Who? Well, let's start with who they are because not everyone here will yeah. will know who they are. All right. Okay, well, it's um, yeah, it's it. I just want to put good vibes, good feelings out there. Like so much on us, uh, uh, social media and the media in general is kind of negative, and um, you know, I guess the whole idea with the utopians is well, it's looking towards a a brighter future. So the things that we talk about can be religion can be politics, can be whatever. But mm -hmm. it's how we can sort of make things better rather than being bleak and depressing all the time. I mean, I know you need to touch up on those things. But, um, yeah, we want to kind of look at it from a, a positive point of view. Um, and, yeah, just covering, like, topics that really matter, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously, religion and things like that come into it. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to do uh, LGBTQ plus uh, rights. issues, mm -hmm. yeah, rights and things like that. Uh, basically, I suppose justice. It's uh, it's based on free thought. It's based on progressive thinking. Um, it's, I guess, essentially woke. <laughs> you know? That's Ooh, getting bad you. word. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> bad, yeah. I know. I heard that's just a synonym for empathy. <laughs> Wokeness. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's such a basic thing. It's like yeah. you're, you're scared to say that word because it's like mm, woke. It's like it's <laughs> this monstrous thing. But if you it's, look at what it means, yeah. It's um it, it essentially um you know, uh, it's about justice, and it comes from, um, you know, the the black movement, mm -hmm. and just be aware, watch out for injustice and unfairness. Yeah. That's where it comes from. Like, it's mm -hmm. not that that big a deal. Um, you know, like uh, right wing media has <sighs> just turned it into this monster of a mm -hmm. thing, and it just isn't. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, literally, you say that word "woke," and people just go, "Ooh." Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. it's so sad what the media and everything mm -hmm. does just to poison everything and make such a an innocent idea. They toxic, did this. They did know? the same thing with the Black Lives Matter movement. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they tried yeah. to make that out to be a terrorist group. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's what I, I mean. That to some degree, because all it means is anti-fascist. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they kind of make it into being fascist or something. I don't even understand what they are doing with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, literally just about being aware. And it's kind of about caring about people. Yeah. Justice for all the people, my, uh, minorities that, you know, that um, cop a lot of crap, I guess, basically. And it's about being aware of that and trying to do something about it. So I, I, I just I can't see why it's a problem. But, uh, you know, right-wing media, conservatives and whatever, they will turn anything like that into a toxic thing, you know, mm -hmm. and take it down yeah. at an angle that's never intended I have never heard this before, but left-handed Jedi says woke is wisdom, openness, knowledge, empathy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I can even say the word woke to to personal friends. I'm sort of, oh, 
those woke mob, you know, because they don't even know. They haven't explored yeah. it. They don't even understand what it means. They've just heard about it, you know, secondhand. And and yeah. to them, the, it's in their mind, it's in, uh, extreme political correctness, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right, where they're, they're trying to yeah. clamp on everything, and mm -hmm. I think that's the way they envision it. Mm -hmm. So, to them, it's like it's it's not a good thing. But the, at the core of it, it's it's a good thing. It it's is, thing. yeah. It's woke is just being aware and awake. Woke to and social let, injustices. Absolutely, yep. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, anyway. Art, let me ask you a question. Um, you have been open and willing to make songs. You know, I, I send you lyrics and you make up songs. And this isn't the first one you've done for me. Um, yeah. Usually the, the other ones that I've done, I've just rewritten the words to very popular children's things. Mm. You, you did yeah. one for me that was parodies. the wheels on the I bus. See. Yeah, parodies yeah. of the wheels mm. on the bus. And we did a parody of... Mm. Um, uh Jesus loves the little children. We turned that into Jesus drowned the little children. Yeah. Um, to go with the flood. Such a sweet little song. That <laughs> <laughs> so my question to you is at, to anyone in the chat, to anyone that's listening to this, mm. would you uh, make music for other people who wanted to express ideas that were in line with anti-religion support of the lgbtq community and so forth yeah. okay absolutely that's mm -hmm. what it's all yeah, about is, um, i can do it too yeah wonderful wonderful so here are resources for you if you have ideas of music that you want to go with a video that you're making to support um something that you're doing uh these people are here and can help you Gigi, that's kind of what it's all about, is bringing people together because there is, it's so exciting in an artistic way. The people, the talent, the knowledge, the information, the life experience, everything, it's like an artistic well of just richness, like, you know, and that's what it's all about is bringing that all out and speaking to people from backgrounds that have ex uh, life experiences and things that I can't personally go through. So if you want to be authentic and write stuff about important issues, you want to directly connect with the people that are going through the issues. Mm -hmm. So to me, if the music's going to be real and authentic and the topics that you cover, you want to talk to the people that are going through it. So it's, it's like a direct connection. And then to be able to, bring together people like Madam Who and, uh, you know, artists like Ganna, who's an awesome artist, uh, visual artist, um, and just different people. We've got authors and all kinds of people um, involved in it. Like, it, it's, I think it's a bit unique. I think it's kind of unique and special to be able to approach it in that way and bring the community in. So it's totally about that. Anyone that's got ideas, throw them at us. It's not we're not going to be able to do everything, right? Right. But we can definitely take ideas on board. And think, yeah, that that I really like the angle with that. That fits this, you know, uh, topic or whatever, and put them together. But please, it's all about the community throwing ideas at us and putting in their artwork and like musical ideas, whatever. Like you just did, GG, with um, that song. And mm -hmm. um, we'll do what we can with it, won't we, Madam Who? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> think, of, think of this song as a first draft, this version. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I love to write. Um, mm. So if you have, you know, you want a poem, you want a, a short speech, you know, I'm I'm happy to write for someone. Mm hmm. Uh, awesome. And Purple Rhymes with Orange reminds us that Art did a phenomenal job with the, the parody that, that Purple wrote uh, for a pagan Christmas song. And here's a link to the song. And I remember that song a little bit. Let's see. What was it to the tune of? I forgot. Um, 
I, oh, it I, was We Wish I'm not, I'm God Rest um, You Merry Gentlemen. Wasn't yes. it give, give Us Back Our Christmas Holiday? Give Us Back Our Christmas Holiday. Yeah, it was that one. Um, yeah, that was great fun too. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I mean, it's so much fun. And Purple's lyrics were so good. Um, I mean, when you get ideas like that thrown at you, it's just, you know, really fun to work with. So I didn't have to change too much at all. Literally just take that idea and I tried to do it traditionally as the original kind of piece of music sounded and essentially just, yeah, copy that and, um, yeah, take uh, Purple's Words and yeah, they were good lyrics. That that was good fun. Mm -hmm. I enjoy doing that. Happy birthday, Michael Bell. Yeah, and Purple says, yep, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, go and check that out because it was actually a fun song. It's a pagan Christmas tune. Oh, cool. Michael Bell says his actual birthday is May 2nd. Mine is May 5th. Um, so our birthdays are very wow. close together. And I'm two years older than Michael Bell. <laughs> a Cinco de Mayo baby. Yep. <laughs> I had a cousin that did a, a big Cinco de Mayo party every year. And uh, so a lot of times my birthday would get put off. We would go to his Cinco Aww. de Mayo party. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hopefully not when you were a kid. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. this, this, was, this was only for... Um, he moved to Indiana while I was living in Indiana and we only did it for the, for about five years while he was mm. living in Indiana because he wasn't there for very long. And I'm glad we did at that time because, um, he has a son with down syndrome. That's about the same age as Robin and Robin and his son were both toddlers at the time. So they Aww. enjoyed being toddlers together. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I wrote a, a song um, about Festivus just recently. Oh, really? <laughs> it's what a dance it? song. Uh huh. So when I'm finished with it, I'll let you hear it. Okay. What exactly is that? Because I, I mean, I've heard of that. That when you say Festivus, I think of Seinfeld. <laughs> it is. It's from Seinfeld, but he he didn't make it up. He just popularized it. It was a writer's right. dad who made it up. Okay. And there was a there was a Festivus festival uh, or celebration or something in a small town just an hour from where I live. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it wasn't Festivus. It was Krampus. Oh, Krampus. but it was basically okay. the same idea. Yeah, yeah. The the whole town had this huge town meeting to try to prevent Krampus from coming what? to their town. <laughs> Why? They did not want this festival because this what? was anti-Christian and this was anti-Christmas. Uh, well, so is Hanukkah. That's anti-Christmas, right? <laughs> like, what's well, the problem? problem was they, they thought that Krampus was Satan and they were bringing the devil into their town. And oh. they were they were all worried about their children being taken, taken it, with the it. devil. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? <laughs> I mean, does anybody so want to kind of think humans. critically? I mean, <laughs> humans, I mean, we're so dumb. Like, yeah. it's so frustrating. Yeah. It's like, please just make some effort to understand yeah. something about anything. You know, please just try. Make an effort. Don't sit in your own little bubble and just be completely mm. ignorant to everything. Please try and understand just something. And then you don't get dumb ideas like that like it's it's so frustrating yeah. is mm -hmm. there any hope is it is it is it worthwhile being mm. just a doomer about everything and just saying well well you can always <laughs> join the utopians what was that Gigi? you could always just go join the utopians <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> yep we are all about critical <laughs> thinking get some facts in there come on get some reality care about yep. each other and base it on facts please not mm -hmm. dumb shit you know which it's so frustrating and, and we all have a, a fight we're all, we're all out there doing it gg mm -hmm. like you do it all the time mm -hmm. and you base uh, mostly on religion and mm -hmm. i know that you cover lgbtq 
plus topics mm -hmm. um, occasionally, but it's mostly religious based mm -hmm. because obviously religion in, infiltrates society still deeply. Yeah. We had 2,000 years of it and it is <laughs> everywhere, you know, even if yeah. it's not blatantly in your face, it's still hanging around with religious schools and it, it yeah, infiltrates society and politics and everything. So, you know, you, you cover that. So we all kind of try to get out there and, and speak about that type of thing. Uh, but, yeah, that's what the Utopians is about, you know. And essentially, please just base things on some kind of facts. Like, I don't know. I'd, I don't want to see negative and to, you know, put down humanity, but... Like in general, we don't Nobody's seem to, to make that much of an effort to understand anything, do we? We no, just kind of not at all. Well, the yeah. video that I just released yesterday really gave me hope, and that is, um, I was responding to a panel who wrote a book. Uh, two members of the panel wrote a book on the deconstruction of Christianity, and they were talking mm. to um, a guy with a Chad with a channel called Good Fight Ministries about the deconstruction movement. And um, I did not realize how big it was. You know, they were talking about all the big names that have started deconstructing and have started leaving Christianity. And mm -hmm. I thought, wow, you know, this this is huge. Yeah, yeah. my I, have you ever heard of DC Talk? Mm -hmm. Well, they were, well, they ended up in Nashville and I was in Nashville at the time and I became friends with um, Kevin Max, one of the three. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah, just, I don't know, recently, within the past five years, he, he started his deconstruction process. And he he's considering himself an ex-evangelical. Okay. Okay. I thought, go, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, light. that's great. It's, and it's definitely something that needs to be done. And I guess um, maybe in particular in, in the U.S., because it seems to be mm. more prevalent oh. over there. Oh. Like it's yeah. definitely more in your face here. But like here in Australia, it's it, it's there, but it's kind of lingering in the background. It's not in your face. Every now and then it is, but um, overall it isn't. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's more subtle. It's a bit more sneaky here because uh, religion is just there. It infiltrates society, but it's mm -hmm. not necessarily up pushing it in your face because if you try and push religion in people's faces here, they'll just say in general, just stop it. I don't want to hear it. You know, leave me alone. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> so you, we don't get too many, you know, evangelicals over here kind of pushing mm. the point, but yeah, it, it's it, but it is everywhere still. And obviously, you know, Major Grey Wolf says, out. You got to give reality a try. It will never fail you. It's right before your eyes. Doesn't even need little whispers at night. Now he's got musical notes around that, like that's a song, but I've never heard that as a song. Have either of you heard that as a song? No. no. Okay. What is it from, yeah. Mage Grey Wolf? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's there's lyrics right there, isn't there? Yep. But I'm not, I'm not familiar with quoting the lyrics, or did he write the lyrics? That's what I'm wondering. Yes, yeah. that's exactly what I'm yeah. wondering. Did you write that, Mage, or you want that to be a song, or is that already a song? We'll let we'll let Mage give us an answer to that one. Yeah, no, most definitely. That's why I love it so much. The community, like I, I hear things all the time that people throw at you, and it'll mm -hmm. be lyrical ideas or whatever. That um, yeah. Just get me kind of excited, you know. Um, he says it's a song out there from an atheist collaboration. Oh, okay, that sounds interesting. Okay, an Who atheist collaboration. Artist? Yeah. Major probably let us know who the artists are. Yeah. Who's involved in the collaboration? Yeah, but we definitely want to yeah keep writing stuff together and you know essentially putting just good ideas out there based on factual stuff and getting away from the the whole conservative ideal which kind of separates everybody. You know, it's so divisive the whole mm -hmm. thing with conservatives or right wing or whatever you want to 
call it. Um, yeah. You know, really, the Utopians is about bringing people together and talking about facts and mm -hmm. just unifying. Because if you look at everything from a, a scientific position, you know, we are all essentially the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. We're not divided. We're not different. Like we are essentially the same, you know, and, and to look from a scientific position, not that I'm a scientist, but, um, you know, it, it kind of makes you, I don't know, science to me makes you humble in a way because it makes you realize you're not special. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I, I feel as though it's a unifying thing. Please stop me if I'm babbling because – <laughs> I went to bed like three hours ago for son's gigs. <laughs> I got into a really interesting discussion on Twitter the other day. Um, one of my favorite problems to bring before people who insist that every word of the Bible is true is to ask mm. them how did they resolve the Galilee Jerusalem problem in the resurrection story. And he obviously didn't know what the problem was because, you know, he started out by saying, well, when Jesus rose, he appeared in Galilee. He wasn't in Jerusalem. I said, go mm. read the Luke version. Yeah. He's in yeah, Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. Said, okay. He, they went to Galilee first and then to Jerusalem. Go back and read yeah. the Luke story again. It says it yeah. happened on Resurrection Day. He said, okay. Uh, they were in Jerusalem and then they went to Galilee. Okay, but Jesus told them to remain there until Pentecost. Why did he tell them to remain there till Pentecost huh. if they were going to Galilee? Not yeah. only that, why would he tell them to remain there until Pentecost when he told the women to tell the disciples to mm. meet him in Galilee? Yeah. Mm. Okay, they went to Galilee first and then they came to Jerusalem and then saw Jesus in Jerusalem. It's 90 miles from Galilee. From Jerusalem to Galilee. Yeah. yeah. You're telling yeah. me they went from Jerusalem to Galilee and back in one day. Yes, they had donkeys. <laughs> donkeys, <laughs> Those donkeys are that far. run 190 miles a day. <laughs> <laughs> they were super donkeys. They were yeah. super donkeys. Yes. <laughs> they had magic donkeys. I said, why don't you just give them a giant Pegasus and have them fly yeah, on Yeah, exactly. Pegasus. Just fly along there. A couple of unicorns, whatever. They'll yeah. do it for you. They're magic. They'll get it sorted. <laughs> you could move with music back then. That's I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How the pyramids yeah, but... might have been built with music. You can Yeah, right. Uh look, look, fundamentally right there. I mean, all of a sudden you straight up you have massive problems with the bible mm -hmm. and religion it's just like please just question it have a look at it like it doesn't seem practical or realistic you know straight up even with that gg is um problems you know immediately contradictions um mm -hmm. and then obviously you go through the rest of the bible and that continues it's oh, like yeah. do we care about truth Mm -mm. Do we care? Obviously, people just want to believe what they want to believe, and then just they want a nice go with story. Yeah, they want a nice story. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. That that's kind of what we're up against. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Mr. Shadow Kitty says it makes as much sense as wandering the desert for forty years. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, who's doing that? Mm -hmm. Michael Bell uh -huh. says, it gets better. My devout Catholic dad says they found Mary's home in Rome. It was magically transported. <laughs> wow. Mary's home in Rome. Oh. Well, that, that doesn't surprise me too much because the Catholics Wait, believe Mary? in a lot of magic. Oh, I'm Mary, the mother of Jesus, of course. No, I know, but it's, I, yeah, never mind. Yeah. It would be Maria, probably. You know, there was just another Mary, uh, not Mary, mother of Jesus' home. So, mm -hmm. and what about the whole Mormon thing? Like the magic I mean, underwear? Well, I don't know. They, they didn't they find a tablet or the golden something? tablets the golden yeah. tablet in America? So, did Jesus yeah. go to America? Like, what's the story with that? And it was 2000 years ago. 
And the only people that were in America at that time mm. were the indigenous right. American Indians, right? <laughs> like, what's so, going on? Please, please, <laughs> just look at your own shit and, like, try and think it through a little bit. Please just make some effort, you know? I Look, I guess it's tough. This is indoctrination, isn't it? So, yeah. I mean, people can't get away from that. They want to believe uh -huh. the lies. They just want to believe it because it's, it's you know, everything that's their whole foundation. Oh, yeah. It's our whole foundation. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So if you bust up the foundation, what are you left with? You have to yeah. start all over. Yeah. You got to start from scratch and you got to leave the group because they're not going to put up with it. If mm -hmm. you start to think in that different way, you have to. Go off and do it on your own. So you're leaving your family and everybody behind and your community. Yeah, um, yeah it's mm -hmm. tough. Look, I, I, I feel for people in that situation. I'm so glad it never happened to me. I'm going to um, stop you just for a moment here because I promised Purple I would do this and I'd forgotten all about it and I don't yeah, want right. to forget. And that is um, right after this stream is over, about 15 minutes or so later, if you go over to Purple Rhymes with Oranges channel, Purple is doing another special on autistic salutations. Um, they're going to be um, talking about um, the, uh, the the issues that autistic people face. So um, after this is over, please head over to Purple's channel for aut autistic page salutations. Awesome. Yep. Good on you, Parps. Okay, Robert X says, why can't Mary have a holiday home in Rome? About time she got payback for that fourth pregnancy. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Well, and don't forget, you know, the Magi gave them all that gold. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. They, they never did say what they did with all that gold. Yeah, never did. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mother of we God in about, Rome. We spoke about this before, didn't we? The Vatican, like the amount of treasures. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. And I know that you've been there, Gigi. I don't know if you have, Madam Who. No. Um, yeah. Well, we were in uh, Italy last year and we just went. It's like, well, let's go and have a look, see what it's all about. But the. Mm -hmm. oh, I think art is. I, I was looking at this comment from Sinister and I was I was reading it and I, I wasn't sure where Sinister was going and I hadn't finished it. Let's see. The first, but I'm not sure the first what, occurs immediately after the Tower of Babel where the brother of Jared prays to not have his language confounded. They go off and build Bronze Age a submersible to sail the Pacific. Oh, oh, this must be in the Golden Tablets from the Mormons talking about how how um, people got to the United States on wooden submersibles. Okay. Hmm. Um, and they somehow land in the Americas, and the story gets more ludicrous when you read the descriptions. Okay. Okay. I've never gotten that far into the um, into the actual beliefs of the Mormon Church. Sorry if we cut you off there, more uh, Art, but you started buffering, and we couldn't hear you yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are. Um, he's buffering again. Yeah, he's still frozen. Okay. Oh, now he's gone. Oh, well. Well. <laughs> John yes, Hunter, was, Mary was lucky, was lucky to get that gold. It nearly went to Brian's mom. <laughs> oh, Brian from right. Life of Brian. Yeah, yeah, Life of Brian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Madam Who? I was going to say uh, the the Utopians. We're just mm -hmm. like a band of, not a musical band, but a tribe of um, artists. There's, you know, a painter, um, um, a rapper, a comedian, uh, me, a musician, arts, a musician. And we just try to um, come at different topics from our different viewpoints. And I keep wanting Gana to to draw while we're doing a live one but she has been up to it yet i thought that would be cool you know just drawing in the background while we're doing a, a just talking but she doesn't talk 
Yeah. That's a real cool idea. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. And she may, maybe she can alter the drawing a little bit or get an idea for the drawing based on what we're talking about at the beginning and have it done oh, by the end. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shadow Kitty says that art ascended to heaven. <laughs> well, Granny, it was nice of you to have me on and I had a pleasure... A lot of fun uh, doing your song, and I look forward to revising it. That would be that would be absolutely wonderful. Yeah, um, and I think I'd like to keep both versions of the song. Well, sure. Um, oh, Art's back. Art, you're back. Yeah. Great to have you back. Okay. Well, I've got to go anyway. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having, having me you. again. All right. Well, let's um, chat, Madam Who. Let's catch up next week. I think we've got sure. a lot to talk about. So let's right, um, yeah, get together and have a chat. Okay. Bye. Bye, everybody. Right. See ya. Bye. Yeah. Um, you, you, missed, you missed Mr. Shadow Kitty's comment that you ascended to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so am I in heaven right now? No, this is your second oh. coming. Awesome. I'm excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> I knew there was something a bit special about me. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's so funny. But do you know what? Um, I don't know what you guys were just talking about, but in the, the stream that I think we had on the Utopians last week, we spoke about secular spirituality. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which you, you couldn't make that one, Gigi. Um and I think, like, it's an important topic because it is something that people need to connect with something. Mm -hmm. um, they need to feel a purpose. They need to feel something, you know, which is why you come up, up with ideas like heaven where you 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 got a purpose and a, a reason to try and be good because you're going to make it to heaven. As ridiculous as the whole, if you really look into it, the whole idea behind it is just doesn't make sense, but it's still something that people need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So we kind of spoke about that. Yeah. yeah. That kind of gets into a topic that I got into in my, my video that I released yesterday was one of the things that the panel was chuckling at was the idea of a secular pastor. But we absolutely yeah. need secular pastors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as yeah. the Christian community needs someone to help them through, you know, the the emotional upheaval of the major mm. event, life event changes, atheists need that too. Mm. Um, and even if a chaplain isn't being a spiritual guide, they can still be a life guide. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mean, we still kind of need purpose, like. Mm -hmm. You know, me as a as as a non-believer, and I say I'm, I'm a non-believer. I I can't believe. I just can't. I can't believe in things like heaven, um, because it doesn't make sense. You know, I can't believe in it. But I still need something. I want to feel as though there's there's some kind of purpose, but there isn't. Mm -hmm. it doesn't appear to be. It's it's random. Life is random. You know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I I guess. My position is is that it's a complex universe. We don't know where everything and anything is possible. Is uh, the possibility of uh, another life or, you know, an after, I don't know, some other conscious experience again beyond this one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, probably not. But I always keep that idea in mind, you know, the possibilities, you know, that, that could be out there. Who knows? The universe is complex, yeah. isn't it? So yes, anything's yeah. possible. Yep. And, of course, we, we can give life any meaning we want to. Yeah. And, and life can be, have as much or as little meaning as we want it to have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like we we create our own purpose, like mm -hmm. within our own little confined little life, we create our own purpose. But I, I guess, yeah, we kind of want to feel as though there's, there's something beyond that, but it doesn't seem likely. 
And to be honest, like the most practical thing really is to just the, the most peaceful place that you can be. And we spoke about this on the stream last weekend. So last weekend um, is death. It's, <laughs> it's literally the most peaceful because what happens with the heaven? Like, what are you doing for eternity? Not just for a hundred years, not a thousand years, not a million years, but for ever, forever, nonstop. You can't escape mm -hmm. it. Doesn't that become a, a hell? That comes becomes hell. Yeah, it yeah. becomes it's it's not heaven anymore. It's hell. Yeah. Mark Simper asks us the idea that we need something similar to religion was taking was taken up by the secular church in the U.S. How is that going these days? And I do not know the answer to that question um, because I'm plugged in with some secular groups, but they're very local. Well, and when I say local, I mean, you know, um, of, of fellow YouTubers and some people on Twitter, but that's it. I'm really not connected with much of a larger um, secular community. I did go to the uh, American Atheist Convention in uh, Philadelphia last week. And that's why there was no stream. Um, and or actually, I guess it was two weeks ago. But, um, and, and I did get some connection there. And one, one of the things that was most interesting is we had a speaker there with, that was from Nairobi. And he was talking about how we need more atheism in Africa. And not to give up on Africa. And I mm. had, I had absolutely felt like you know, people in Africa are just so into their spiritualism that, you know, it's hopeless. And he's telling you, no, it's not. He was telling us, no, mm. it is not hopeless. It, you know, you, you can reason with us. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, I don't know who this person is, but he's clearly an example that you can reason with them because he obviously doesn't believe in all, all of that stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. I, I mean, you have to try. You absolutely have to try, and I know it's a it's a difficult thing to try and to get through. But I mean, to me, that's a purpose, you know. Um, Mr. Shadow Kitty says, "Heaven is you keep singing a gazillion bottles of beer on the wall, <laughs> over and over again." <laughs> yeah, look, that says so much. It it is, isn't it? Like it's mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not practical. But we we and and this thing about um you know non-religious groups getting together and talking like if if we could have that conversation that secular conversation maybe we'd find a spirituality that doesn't need to have fantasy connected with it you know just our connection as human beings with the universe I mean let's face it it's pretty freaking amazing what's out there you know it's amazing. And science gets us closer to it than anything, definitely way closer than religion. Um, David Cheevers asks an, an excellent question. Why does it matter if Africa believes in God or not? And that that is, I, th I think that is an excellent question. And I think it matters for the same reason that it matters here. And if anything, it matters even more over there because here, when the religious get their way, the there is oppression for minority groups like the LGBTQ yeah. community, and there is oppression uh, even for racial minorities. There's oppression for women, but in Africa, it is ten times worse because if you are an atheist, there are some countries in Africa where being an atheist will put you in jail or get you killed. Um, there are some countries in Africa where being gay will get you killed. And it matters very much if they believe in God or not, because if you can get them to think rationally instead of biblically, they, they could come to see that there's nothing wrong with being gay. It's, it's just who you choose. To, I shouldn't say choose. That's the wrong word. But it, it's just who you're attracted to. 
And mm. who you're attracted to isn't isn't a matter of, oh, this is what I want to do because I'm rebelling against a God. No, that's not it at all. Yeah. It's the organization of religion, isn't it, that is the issue. Like if people have a personal belief and they don't try to push it on anyone else, if it's completely their own personal belief and what they believe doesn't affect anybody else, that's fine. Off you go. You go and believe in that. I disagree, but you believe in it. You have it. But as soon as you try to organize a group and then try and push that on society with your religious ideas behind it, then it becomes a problem. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Africa needs to be <laughs> kind of taught and otherwise. And there is a link stream in a half an hour. I might try and pop over there, actually. Okay. Mark Caesar and, um, says eternity gets a little boring, particularly the last million years or so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, can you imagine that? It's insanity, isn't it? And and what is this purpose of trying to achieve going down? What's the point in creating a universe and a life for people mm -hmm. where the whole time is just spent trying to achieve getting to heaven? Why bother with it in the first place? What, well, why? Yeah, why did God make Earth at all? What, why what, make what, Earth? Why bother? Great. Why create a yeah. universe? What's the point? Just, Let's just well, stay no, in the you could spiritual just make realm. heaven and make all the people be in heaven, and there doesn't Straight have to be any sin, and there no doesn't drama. have to be any suffering. You know? Yeah. What? What? Why? Well, why start with? Why start with an imperfect world when you don't have to do that? I oh, know it's it's so ridiculous. Look, the obviously the the scientific idea is <laughs> just makes way much more sense to understand that this is all random. Is just makes so much more sense, you know. Start with that. Let's build our spirituality around that. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and unified people come together. We're all in this together. We don't exactly know why, but science gives us a fair idea. Base it around that, and we'll talk shit through together and work out, you know, our purpose and how we feel about things. We'll talk honestly with one another and not base it on some – really, it's a, just a silly idea, isn't it? An ancient, silly idea. Please just get beyond it. What's the point? Wasting time. Move on. Yeah, I think re, um, Purple has a really good thought here, which is religion is what happens when someone builds a bureaucracy around spiritual Absolutely, spirituality. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so true. Yeah, that is the issue. Is that it's um yeah it's an organization, and um, I mean like only like five years ago, or something here in Australia, um it was made legal for a uh, gay marriage. How long ago? About five years ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And it was religion that kept it illegal for so long? They were um, one of the main tools behind it. So the, the Christian lobbyists, uh, they were lobbying the government to and pushing against it. So, yes, it was a mostly religion because you speak to people around here, most people are just kind of like, yeah, whatever. You're gay. Mm -hmm. You want to get married? Off you go. Most mm -hmm. people are like that. Although you don't know what people think deep down in themselves, but at mm -hmm. on, on face, you know, value, I guess, um, most people would just say, well, I don't care. You're mm -hmm. gay. You want to get married, you just do it. But, yeah, it was uh, Christian lobbyists that really pushed against it. And that's ridiculous in, in mm -hmm. this modern society that it took us this long, and this is Australia-wide, um, you know, until about roughly five years ago. Wow. That it was it was made legal, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, we are out of time. Um, so before we go, do you know when the next Utopian stream is going to be? I'm not sure, but I would like to do um, a special on, like, LGBTQ plus issues. Okay. So I've got a, a bunch of people that I know well, actually, yes, personally and um, on social media and whatever, where I want to try and pull something together where we can talk about 
what has happened in the past and how how what the progress is with issues revolving around that and you know the future of that so i want to do yeah specific topic on that okay um, that sounds so good that, that now, i'm looking one. forward to that one yeah I, I, I would like you to be there one. if you can do that that gg that would be yeah awesome. i'd like to host that one yeah that would be great. So I'm saying it's not going to be next weekend. I've got a gig next weekend, so I'm focusing on that. So I'm playing in a band. Um, the following weekend is my son's uh, 30th birthday. We're going down the coast. So now I can't do it then. I'm saying maybe in three weeks' time. Okay. I want to try and be consistent with um, the Utopians' live streams, but real life doesn't kind of allow that to happen. So the mm -hmm. next one's going to be in maybe – let's say three weeks okay definitely definitely no more than in a month's time so okay but that's going to be the focus so maybe we can talk about that and pull that one together it'd be awesome if you could host that that would be great yeah that that i i, I don't think that will be a problem at all the only other thing that i had coming up was um i've i've got a wedding to go to on june 1st mm. but that's not until june 1st so yeah so it's a little um, while away. So it would definitely be before then. Yeah. 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 A um, couple of announcements that I have for my own channel is um, uh, I had said on my video that if my Who's Afraid of Deconstruction video got over 3,000 views that I would do a part two. Wow. I mm. had a lot of people asking for a part two. I was getting three to 5,000 view views per video for a while. And then... Um, all of a sudden my views just dropped way down. So this one picked it back up. So yes, there will be a part two. So next week will be part two to who's afraid of deconstruction. And next week's guest is going to be Michael Beverly. And in a final note, I just finished putting together a collab for Apologia. And I don't know when he's releasing it, but I imagine That's it cool. will be fairly soon. So if you, mm. Uh, watch Pologia. I will be on Pologia very soon. Awesome. You've got a great brand, Gigi, and just keep putting it out there because it really is. It really is good what you do. And I, well, I respect you. and admire it. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure having you, Art. Thank you. I enjoyed being here and I'm looking forward to our continued relationship. Uh, yeah, let's keep doing this this kind of thing. It was great to be here. Thank you. Live your life. Bye, guys. Thank you. See you soon.